talk will be titled Traverse Shoppers. And it is based on a joint work in progress with Toby Dickerhoff. And the answer. But before I go to perverse shoppers, let me fi finish what I want, what I couldn't finish at uh, the first, uh, the first lecture, which is one more additional feature of the category of perverse sheets on a surface, and that ve comes very handy today because it fits with the last uh, five minutes of Jan's talk. So, so uh, let me put it again. So one more feature. Of the category of perverse sheaves on a surf on a surface X, so oriented surface, with respect to a bunch of points. So uh, oriented, oriented surface, possibly the boundary. So it would be something like this. So, and this is uh, what I wanted to call formal picard left theory, but maybe now we should call it formal chikoti wapa theory. Suppose we have a perverse sheaf on a surface like this. So it's completely <laughs> elementary setting. We write our point as N as well, in my notation it was W1, Wn, final set of points. So uh, at every point, at every w, uh, point Wi, the, the perverse sheaf has a, a local system of vanishing cycle or cycles on the unit circle around wi. So we have phi i. So we can say it's a vector space or it's a really local system on the circle around this point. So it's a local system. So f gives, gives me system on s1 around wi. Now suppose we have uh, two, po two points, say Wi and Wi and Wk. Then here we have another basically vector space with monodromy called phi k. So if I have a, a path alpha, suppose I have a path alpha from Wi to uh, Wk. Then first of all, it, it, suppose it doesn't, doesn't pass through, a, a, through any other point. So first of all, the, recall that restriction of f to x minus n is a local system. So when I start out of the point wi, so there is a map. Uh, so, so near wi, we have a description. We have phi, uh, phi i psi to the i, there is a i, and there is b i. Right, so near this point, uh, so, and those can be seen as morphisms of local systems. Can be seen as morphisms of local systems. Local systems on the, on the circle. So if I start here, I first go, suppose I start here in some particular direction. Let me blow, blow it up a little. So what is Wi? And the circle, suppose it's big. So on this circle, I have system phi i. On this circle, I have system psi i. But really, it's just the systems on the formal circle. So if I start and go in some direction, so I, I start from phi i in this direction, and then go to psi i in this direction. But that is just, it's the stock of f restricted to x minus n. And then I can move. Uh, so, so, so here I get to uh, psi i. And here I move around this 
thing and then go to, go to psi k and then eventually go to phi k. So I'll get a map. Uh, if, so I get a map m i k, which is m i k of f from phi i to phi k. So it depends, uh, sorry, m i k uh, alpha. m i k alpha of f. And here phi i really would be phi i starting at, this, uh, at the direction of alpha. So, so, so stocks, stocks at directions of alpha. So alpha is a path. So now, so clearly it is independent if we deform this path a little. A little means that we are not allowed to cross any other uh, singular points. So suppose here in, in the middle there is a point WJ. And so suppose now we move it around this point. And here will be a path alpha prime. So consider elementary situation when we have such a bygone, there is alpha and there is alpha prime. And in between, there is exactly one point Q. So and then we'll, we draw a path a gamma here, and we go draw a path beta here. Then uh, we, we have the, for, the formal Picard-Lefsch's formula. It says that m i k alpha prime equals m i k alpha plus m uh, m j k beta m i j gamma. That's exactly uh, what Jan was writing on the board. So and this is just true uh, for any perverse shift whatsoever. So this is some uh, certain uh, kind of reformulation of the very basic properties of perverse sheaves. So this formula is simply the conjugation of the formula which sort of relates, which relates those two maps with the monodromy. So we, we have a formula like this. T minus 1 equals A times B. And then we conjugate this pre-composed, post-composed with various maps, and that's what we get. So basically, if we sort of swallow this formula, then this is a natural consequence. It's just the, the same formula uh, written in a more invariant way. So this is, this is about maps from one vector space to itself, and this is about maps from one vector space to another. So in the relation with uh, classical picard lefschetz theorem. Theory is this, so I, I recall very briefly, because Jan already did uh, most of it. Suppose W from Y to X, X is now a curve, is a Lefschetz pencil. So this, the simplest situation would be. So it means a proper holomorphic map with only Morse critical points. holomorphic map with only Morse critical points. And distinct critical values forming the set M equals the W1, W. So in this setting, we have a perverse sheaf. Uh, in this setting, we have a perverse sheaf. It's called F W on X. So it lies again in the category perv X M. So on the complement, so let me de describe this sheaf in, in, in those terms. So on the complement on x minus n, it is the, the local system. Uh, so so the, the dimension, let me write, R D uh, W star of C Y. So D is the relative dimension. D is dim 
y over x. So dimension of y minus 1. So, uh, and the phi, the, the, uh, so this, this gives me the local system outside. It gives me the vector spaces psi. And the vector spaces phi, I simply spend by the classical Lefschetz vanishing set. So the classical picture would be like this. So we have near this point, that would be w minus 1 of wi. So this is a nearby thing, which is smooth. And here around, this is, this is the vanishing sphere. So we have this chief fw, it can also be seen as the minimal extension of this local system or can be said as the perverse homology fw equals h d minus 1 perverse simply of the direct image of w star cy. And in this case, for this chief, uh, those spaces are one dimensional and uh, m M i k alpha of uh, f w is the intersection number. Is, so, so is multiplication, multiplication by the intersection number by a number. So it's uh, from one dimensional vector space to another one dimensional vector space. Multiplication by the number that's called n uh, n i k or m i k. Uh, alpha in Z, which is the intersection number of thimbles. Intersection num, num, intersection of thimbles. So for this we don't need those, so need this path to be a straight line. We can start thimble sort of going in this direction and kind of push it al along the connection, we, uh, and, and we have the same thing, in, in the same th thing here. So this gives uh, the classical uh, picard lefschetz or chikoti wafa formula, which would be, so let's now say picard lefschetz CV, that M I K uh, 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 alpha prime, uh, sorry, uh, alpha, alpha prime equals M I K alpha plus M J K beta uh, M I J gamma. So this is basically the uh, fundamental property of any perverse sheaf uh, obtained by uh, sort of thinking uh, more invariantly about this formula. Okay, so having said this, let me now this, uh, sort of explain what we want to do with categorifying this, all those features, this picture and all those features. So let me call it the context for categorification. So let me call this part, uh, this will be both preliminary, the part one, this will be part two, context for categorification. Uh, so this means that we want to replace vector spaces by triangulated categories or some versions of those. So, uh, and possibly with enhancement something like A infinity enhancement or DG enhancement, so possibly with what's known as enhancements. A infinity or DG. So this means in particular, if you have DG enhancement, that means we have complexes, our home between two objects. 
rather than uh, rather than uh, just ordinary homes, which would mean like homology of those complexes. So the, one of the criterion for this, that if we can start with a triangulated category V, then we can form a vector space, which is the Grotten D group of this V, K0 of V. And we can uh, tensor it with our field K if we want to work with our field, with some field K. We want to lift uh, re relations between vector spaces in, in, into relations between triangulated, uh, triangulated categories. So to be so a little bit more systematic, uh, there is so but there are several types of enhancements. As, so uh, another version would be the context of infinity categories of Luria, and there was a so embedding of this sort of stable infinity categories of Luria. So. The re re relation this was clarified by Giovanni Faonte, a couple of papers. Uh, so now, why did I mention this? Because the reverse sheaves, are, they are not sheaves. They are complexes of sheaves. The ordinary sheaves of vector spaces, they, ca they categorify without many, pro many problems. So sheaves, sheaves of vector spaces, it can be replaced by uh, what's called either stacks or infinity stacks or just called sheaves, infinity stacks of digitators. This is not, or sometimes they're simply called sheaves. But uh, perverse sheaves are complexes, so it's not clear to have a complex of categories. And not so easy. But uh, uh, the point of some features that I was recalling in the first talk is that the quiver descriptions sometimes are extremely simple. And they sort of, you, the point of them that you don't work with complexes. So those descriptions, they emphasize that perverse sheaves form an abelian category. And they, I describe them in terms of abelian category data. And such data, as seen from this line, is not hard to uh, categorify. So what I want to say that the quiver descriptions or sometimes called linear algebra descriptions, whatever you call them, they do categorify. So and let me start with a uh, uh, prototypical example of such categorification, which was motivation for our paper with Vadim. That will be part three. Let me call this spherical factors. So this is a concept introduced by Rina Anna and Timothy Logvinenko. Uh, uh, purely in the context of triangulated or, uh, or enhanced triangulated categories, but which uh, turns out to be precise categorical analog of simple, simplest instance of classification of perverse sheaves. So let me recall this concept. So we have two triangulated categories, triangulated categories, or pre-triangulated, D0, D1. And we have a functor F between those functors, between those categories, sorry. We have exact functor of pre. So I'll explain, it will be clear why do I need pre here, triangulated category. So pre means enhanced. So there is extra data such as this. Now suppose this factor has an adjoint factor. 
the right adjoint. So this, there are many factors in algebraic geometry between triangulated categories of sheaves and so on. And the, quite often those functors have adjoints. So is it, say it has a right adjoint. Okay, so if they have a right adjoint, then we have the canonical uh, map. The, it's called the co-unit and unit of that joint. So we have F composed with F right adjoint goes to the identity of the category D1. So and now what I want to do, I want to take the cone of this natural transformation of functors. I have one self functor and another self functor. Let's take the cone of this. So it cannot be done in the context of pure triangulated categories, but it can be done in, the cont in, in this context, in the context of DG factors. Yeah? And let me call this transformation T1. Similarly, we have a dual transformation from the identity of D0, not dual, from identity of D0 to F adjoint composed with F. And let take its, let's take its cone and call it T0. Now, the, this function is called spherical. I just omit some minor, really minor detail here for this purpose. If those uh, transformations are equivalences of categories. So F is called spherical. if T0, T1 are equivalences. So, but now from this point of view with uh, replacing our categories by Grotten D groups, so here you have relation, uh, relation say C equals A plus B. This corresponds here to exact triangle A, C, B, A of 1. So what we have here, we have a lifting of the condition uh, that T, uh, for, for, uh, this formula. We have a lifting of this formula. This was my, uh, was A, this is B, but a priori if I just have two functors in different directions, I have the composition, but I cannot compare it with the identity. But if the second factor is the adjoint, then there is a natural map. So there's a canonical way of forming the difference between, uh, between uh, this and the identity. So T would be, uh, so probably I should, I, should, I should write actually T plus one, A plus B. So T equals one minus AB. Uh, T equals, or, or, or is AB minus one. So there are different ways of writing it, okay? So this is precise analog of, the, the, so this is a categorical analog. Of perf on a disk, the reverse shears on a disk with singularity at zero. Now it may be worth explaining why the term spherical. So because it looks uh, from this point of view, it would be better to call it perverse functors. Of course, it, it, it was not known at that time. For some reason, it was not noticed, even though it's on the surface. Let me explain the term spherical. So, like other examples. Suppose a category D0 is simply the category of vector spaces. And the map into some category D1. So we work over K with, with, with again, over some field K. Yeah. So it, also it's a category linear over some field K. So then uh, what, what's an exact functor from this category to D1? Well, one dimensional vector space would be, would be sent into some object, some object E which would mean that uh, any vector space V would be sent into V tensor E. So such functor is uh, given by one object. So the previous terminology was that an object E in D1 is called spherical for 
of uh, dimension M if its uh, X algebra looks like a sphere. If X I uh, in D1 from E to E equals zero in I equals not equal to zero in M and K I equals zero on so the same as cohomology, cohomology of the n-dimensional sphere with coefficients of infinity. So in this case, uh, what's interesting in, the, in this example is that the functor t0, so, so what happens? Uh, uh, what will be the, the, the functors t0 and t1? So the opposite would be home from uh, let me write it like this. Uh, this, this factor f. So f uh, upper star, if I'm co correct, would take any any object uh, e prime into home from from e to e prime. So and if you do this, then t uh, zero would be shifted by n. Because we sort of kill one of those two. So the X algebra is uh, two, uh, it will be the result of tensor multiplying with the second, with the second uh, part, with the highest part of this homology. So it is not so interesting, but T1 is actually quite interesting. It would be a factor which takes F into cone from E, tensor home from E to F. To F. And this is known as the mutation, sometimes known as mutation, sometimes known as a reflection. So from the practical point of view, it's interesting to have a good class of examples when more or less out of nothing, you can construct an equivalence of categories. So with the, pro the property is such that from the from this and, and, and uh, more or less one can prove that uh, T1 is an equivalence. So let me uh, specialize this example a little more. So if it mimics the behavior of a sphere, I can use the sphere. I can construct a tautological spherical function using the sheaves on a sphere. Yeah? So particular cases would be, would be this. First, D1, the, the, the derived category of sheaves on S, SM. So then o object E, which is simply the constant sheaf, is spherical. So in this way we get, uh, notice that in this way we get an interesting self-equivalence of the category of sheaves on the sphere. It looks a little bit like the Fourier transform, but, it, but it's not, not exactly. So this functor T1, T1 of a sheaf F, so let me write like this. It's fiber at a point X or stock. I write in, sort of in, informally, it's easy to say what happens is SD equals R gamma so, sorry, Sn of Sn minus x f. Because if you write uh, this shift by kernel, so, so the corresponding kernel on Sn times Sn would be the constant shift, uh, let's say j, uh, J, there are two versions, J lower star and J factorial, that will be inverse kernels to each other. Let's say J lower star, or let's write J, J factorial K of Sn N cross Sn minus diagonal. So let me write R gamma factorial. And the inverse, so inverse, same with R gamma. And would be J, J lower star. 
So it's a, 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 a kind of a version of uh, Fourier Sato transform, except we live on the same sphere. We throw away diagonal, while in the Fourier tra Sato transform, we throw away the set of pairs which have positive scalar product. But in both cases, we have an occurrence. And here we have a self occurrence. Uh, it, it, another example, which is of interest in algebraic geometry, of course, is when D1 is the, is the category of coherent sheaves on M, when M is an n-dimensional Calabi-Yau manifold, compact. And E equals OM or any line bar. Or uh, let me do one more example, one prime. So a generalization of uh, one would be like this. Suppose we have a, a family of spheres. Suppose S to B is a S N fibration. So then we have a function. Suppose this is called P. Then we have a functor from derived category of sheaves on B to the derived category of sheaves on S, given by the pullback. Is it, so it's just a relative version of this. It's a spherical fact. And the corresponding T1 is the same as in, in, in 1, but relatively over a base. Uh, and a, a, a particular example, but even more particular, which is quite interesting. Suppose, P, uh, suppose we have a variety of the form G mod B, and that we have a projection PI. Correspond so G is a semi-simple group, B is the Borel subgroup, is the flag variety, and we have projection to a partial flag variety, which is almost full flag variety, but one root uh, omitted. So almost, almost full. So one root generator on it. Then it's a vibration with fiber, uh, which is CP1, which is S2. So it's S2 vibration. And, uh, uh, and uh, it gives a spherical function. So, so we have, we have uh, several spherical functors, so if d, b sheaves on g mod d, i to d, b sheaves on g mod b. So in particular, we have the, the reflection factor, factors t, i, and it is known that they form the action of the, of the braid group. So known t, i form an action of the braid, braid group, br, I said, G corresponding to on this category. So if you, if you look at it even more carefully, so this, uh, this braid group, br, G, is the fundamental group of uh, H, of the complex Cartan subalgebra minus, the, minus union of uh, reflections that let, let we call, uh, call it delta, delta alpha, alpha roots, modulo w. So it's sort of complement to the di discriminantal variety. Well, this is something like this. So what we have here, we have that, uh, we, we have that th those functors give a local system of categories W is the wild group. Huh? Oh, P1 of, of the quotient. Yeah. So we have a local system of categories. 
and the fact the fact that uh, the elementary so, so what, what happens here that the movement around movements around those things are given by spherical function that means that we already have something like an extension like a perverse extension of this to the next co-dimension. So, uh, in any case, so we, we uh, assume for working definition that uh, a perverse sheaf on a disk, at least, is a spherical function. We simply uh, assume this. And let's try to uh, sort of combine such things together in more geometric patterns. So, so the postulate that a perverse shoulder and by shoulder I simply means simply mean a categorified perverse sheaf on the unit disk this singularity at zero is a spherical function. Now, uh, let me make a few remarks here after this. The first remark. Uh, to emphasize a difference between this definition and definition of perverse sheaves, that really we're dealing only with one functor here, because the other functor is the adjoint. So in the categorical case, in the categorical case, only one functor is needed. The other is adjoint. So, and we even cannot introduce another functor because then we won't be able to write the exact triangle. So, and also it's, it, it's known that the other adjoints uh, can be recovered from the right adjoints by uh, composing with monodromy. So, the left adjoint, if I write it like this, is the right adjoint composed T0 inverse and the same as T1 inverse composed with the right adjoint from this side, up to shift. So I'm, I may have missed a little shift. So there's re remark number one. So there's a slight difference. So uh, remark number two, that similarly, that is difference, uh, that, that similarly to the vector space case, similarly to vector space case, uh, we have actually local systems of categories because we have self-equivalences. So we have D0 with self-equivalence T0 and D1, the self-equivalence T1, are really local systems of categories on S1, or can be considered. Huh? So, and geometrically, we should uh, s s sort of uh, look at them like this. So, let me write, write it now like this. D0 underline, it's a local system. Then we have, and F would be also, will be promoted, will be commuted with them. And we similarly have D1 underline, it's a morphism of local systems, such that uh, the monodromy is the spherical reflection. So we have a, here that every stock of this morphism is a spherical factor. So this, let me call it, introduce this concept of spherical morphism of local systems. The 
which means stock at any theta in S1 is a spherical functor. And the monodromy are from theta to theta, the monodromy equals the reflection, the spherical reflection corresponding to this factor. associated to f theta. Stock would be f theta is a, slow, is, is a stock over theta. So, and a slight modification of this remark, part C. So, uh, we want to view uh, this picture, so this D1, as uh, nearby cycles. And when we say nearby cycles, it means that for a perverse sheaf, it would be the same as the stock of the corresponding local system outside, outside a small neighborhood of the point. So, and we can also incorporate this. Uh, so F, or rather F underlined, can be used to glue a non-perverse sheaf of categories. So we don't know the general definition of perverse sheaf of categories, but as I said, a non-perverse sheaf is an easy concept. Or if you more formally would be an object called infinity stack and so on of categories, on, uh, not on the circle, but on the complement of the circle, complement of the disk, on this type of variety. On Y, which is given by a set of complex number Z, such that absolute Z greater equal than 1. So this Y has inside, has a standard circle and has the complement. So S1 inside Y, and also inside there is Y minus S1. Let's call those ma this map I, and let's call this map J. This, this open, open part and the closed part. So this thing is stratified in, two, in, two part, in the open and closed thing. So this perverse shift of categories, let's call me, let me call it S like this. It would be gothic S. So the restriction of this gothic S to S1 would be or in more formal notation would be I upper star of this gothic S. It would be the shift of categories D0. D0. The, the uh, restriction of the complement, so let me write it like this. I write J upper star S. Right? So, so in general, when we have an open and closed, we have a canonical way of gluing sheaves from, uh, from sheaves on the open and the closed. Uh, the formula would be like this. Uh, I upper star. So, so we uh, yes uh, would be D one, and S will be uh, locally constant on uh, Y minus S one. So, and then in such cases, we have two, two sheaves, uh, one on the complement, one on the uh, close set, and the, the, what we need only the only what we need is the gluing morphism. So F bar F underlined is the gluing morphism. So instead of t talking about spherical functors, we can now talk about spherical sheaves on this type of model surface on the surface Y. It's a it's a shift which is locally constant on the circle, locally constant outside, and such that the gluing map is a spherical morphism of local systems. So we slightly modify this concept. So 
so we have a, a concept, a, a concept of a spherical sheaf of categories. So a datum of such spherical shift is the same as datum of spherical function. So and now I want to move to the next step, to the part four. It will, let me call it perverse shoppers on surfaces. So suppose, again, if I return to my situation, but modify it a little. Suppose x is oriented topological surfaces, oriented topological surface, possibly with boundary. And also I want to allow, allow corners. So corners, basically, we can think of them as some set of marked points in the boundary. It's just a way not to write that they have one set of marked points later for singular parts of the perverse sheaf and yet another set of marked points. So, so, so basically, let, let, let me say another type of marked points. So it was, would be something like this. So th th this will signify the corners. And inside, I will take uh, inside like n, a finite set of an interior points as before. So if this is x, so then uh, as I discussed in the first uh, talk, we can form the real blow up and we'll call it x tilde. Just real blow up, blow up, real n of x. It will be surface with additional boundary components, small circles corresponding to corresponding to our, our marked points. So let me use the notation dx or del x is the for the proper boundary. Which means they take all those points, but not include the corners. Not including corners. Now let me write this here. Now let's uh, give a definition, uh, a definition of what is a perverse chopper. So a perverse chopper on X on X with possible singularities at N is by definition, a sheaf of categories is non-perverse sheaf of categories. I call it S on X tilde, which is constructible with respect to natural stratification, given by those little circles and everything else. So constructible. to the category to the strata of uh, S1 W, disjoint union over W in N, and the complement. And such that the restriction to the neighborhood of, to the neighborhood of any circle, which is the same as 
uh, our surface Y here is a spherical sheaf. And such. That S prestige the neighborhood of any S1W is a spherical shift. Uh, so, so in such objects, they form, uh, again, what do they form? Uh, it's like saying what triangulated categories form. The, Shift of triangulated, triangulated, or pre-triangulated, pre-triangulated. They form in itself a, an infinity category. So they form, so they form an infinity category called Schob or XM. So in this definition, we took uh, as the starting point the construction of Sabah which associates to a perverse sheaf on the surface and not perverse sheaf on the blow up. So, and for perverse sheaves, this construction loses some information because we use only one part, because you, you, only one part of the data of the perverse sheaves. But in the categorical case, the other map is recovered as the adjoint. So we, uh, the drawback of this definition, it is sort of geared to a particular choice of the, of, of the set of singular points. If we, we may want to enlarge the singular points, but then I, it will be a slightly different space. If you're sort of willing to live with this, then this is not a problem. So uh, let me uh, discuss a little more what's an explicit data involved in such a concept of a perverse shop. That would be very similar to what I uh, did at the beginning of this hour. We have certain uh, picard lefschetz chikotti wafa type data. So what's explicitly, what does it mean? So explicitly, it means. So first of all, not surprisingly, we have a local system of categories on the complement. Categories. X minus N. Second, we have a category phi I. I, simply, I now switch to the notation from uh, perverse sheaves, so I, I, I simply call it phi i, which, or more realistically, it would be a local system of categories on circle S1 wi. So for every wi in the set M, right? and together with a bunch of spherical functors. So basically what we have, we have one spherical functor for each neighborhood of this thing, and sort of the target of those functors are connected to each other by a local system. So plus uh, data of spherical functors. So let me just make a picture like this. This is this little circle. This would be phi i. So if you're corresponding to this point, it will be F i, oops, psi i. It will be st stock at nearby point. Now those data, just because of the meaning of spherical functors, this would give us picard lefschetz triangles of the same generalization, categorical generalizations of the picard lefschetz formula, which now will be triangles, exact triangles. Picard So again, we have the, 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 the situation as before. We have phi i, phi k, phi j. We have this will be part alpha. This will be part alpha prime. This will be part beta and gamma. 
and will be similarly for, uh, equivalences, between, will be certain functors between phi i and phi k, and we have an exact triangle of functors like this, m j k of alpha, m i j of beta, m i j of alpha, m i j of alpha prime. So it will be triangles of functors between the category phi i and the category phi k. So, in particular, an exa example of this would be the Schober associated to a Lefschetz vibration. This would be a local version of uh, sort of this, this would be the construction, which the truly geometric version that underlies the Foucault Zeidel category. Example. Call it the Schober uh, of S W associated associated to a Lefschetz vibration. Once, be once before we have y from y to x. X is a surface. So the, it, it has critical values n, wn, and this we assume to be Keller with a Keller form H, which is G plus I omega, so it's the Riemannian metric, that is the symplectic metric. Uh, so on, I simply now repeat in a categorical way what uh, I said for the ordinary uh, perverse sheaves on x minus n, it is a local system of the Foucault categories of Foucault categories of, say, w minus 1 of x, of x with respect to the form omega. Uh, the corresponding categories Phi i, so strictly speaking, this sh sh there are different uh, uh, subtleties involved here. The easiest way of speaking of this is to assume that those categories are too periodic, which I will do. So the, those categories are simply the derived categories, too periodic, of vector spaces. And the functor of over, over field k, and the functor f i, would take the one-dimensional vector space into the vanishing cycle. So, so this, in the, in the nearby fiber, there will be actual, will be actual vanishing cycle, vanishing sphere, let's put it this way. So this vanishing sphere is a spherical object of the Foucault category, and therefore it's a spherical functor. So we have this construction, which sort of underlies and uh, sort of repeats the most uh, immediate uh, content of Zeidel's construction of uh, Foucault Zeidel category. So underlies and maybe logically precedes with some hindsight, logically precedes pro uh, pre. Uh, didn't spell it. Precedes, okay, okay. I'm forgetting whatever I knew of English. Okay, precedes uh, Foucault Zeidel category. So simply the only thing we need to know is that there is a local system of Foucault categories outside and that we have spherical functors here, which are simply objects, spherical objects of, this, of these categories. At, at every point. For x, yes, for x, yes. And uh, which is, Foucault's idol is given for x equals c. So when 
x equals c or disk. But this construction makes sense. We don't we don't need uh, you, you, so it's a very good point that we don't need here that x to be the disk. So what I want to say in the remaining of this hour, more or less, is that to have a construction which to every shopper uh, associates something, and if we apply it to this particular shopper, we get the Foucault Zeidel category. Okay, where am I now? Just a minute. Uh, okay, so now. So now let me go do the next part. Uh, some new, this will be part five, I think. Let's call it Lagrangian collapse for shoppers and surfaces. Yes. Yes, but then it's not clear what's the analog of this. So you, you can do the category of coherent shifts of the fiber, but you don't. Yes, yes. Well, so there is some other uh, sort of uh, aspects of these shoppers which are related to coherent uh, geometry. But uh, I, I, maybe I'll, I'll discuss it later. So. The point is that, is that yes, various variational, variational models give, uh, give uh, examples of shoppers. But so it's not related to the example with the spherical functor associated to Kalabi Yau and things like that. Yeah, but I, um, I don't have time for this today. So let's call it Lagrange collapse, Lagrangian collapse for shop, perverse shoppers on shop surfaces. So basically what we want, we want the analog of a global sections or something like global sections. So we want of R gamma XF when F, a perverse sheaf, is replaced by a perverse shopper. So then uh, let me recall and slightly ampl amplify what I said at the first talk about the graph and collapse for sheaves. So so we have, we may imagine now our surface possibly with corners. And we say, so let's make a definition, a graph k inside x is called spanning with respect to the corner structure, it's called spanning. With respect to corner structure, if there are any corners is if it has a sort of legs which terminate in the corners in a one-to-one -one way. And apart from that, it's, uh, it's the same as for surfaces with boundary. If legs of, of k, of k uh, terminate in one-to-one -one way in, in the corners. In particular, if a surface with boundary but no corners, then we simply say that the graph doesn't meet the boundary. So in this picture, it will be something like this. So if 
it, this happens and uh, and 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 k is homotopy equivalent to x. Sorry, but basically, uh, surface is some kind of ribbon neighborhood of k. So in this case, I mo modify a little what I said before. Uh, for surfaces just with boundary, in this case, for f in perv of x m, if m is contained in the graph k. So that will be a situation when you have collapse of the entire geometry on the graph. If uh, then uh, HI of K, there will be first chromology shift, first and only chromology shift of F, is simply, again, is, is the same formula as HI plus 1 of X, del X of F, well, this is, now del x is understood in this way that we throw this out. So what's interesting in this formula is that this thing is independent on the graph. And this depends on the graph. So the sheaf will depend, even the stocks of the sheaf will depend, depending on how much the, does the graph uh, intersect. It sort of ramifies. So this is motivated, so let me again say that this is motivated by Kantsevich's idea that the Foucault category can be calculated by localizing on a singular Lagrangian skeleton, if such exist, exists. Category can be, can be uh, calculated, whatever it means. to a singular, possibly singular, Lagrangian skeleton. So this statement so far is just for perverse shifts, shifts but it, was, it becomes very natural in view of this idea. So this is motivated by. But now, once we look at this, that here we have the chromology with coefficients and the perverse sheaf. So then, uh, this su su suggests so, so that the cat categorical analog of chromology with coefficients and perverse sheaf should be uh, understood in terms of some kind of Fukaya category. But really, the, this analog sh should be a Fukaya category type construction. So let me now formulate uh, a statement, formulate a, a result, and then I will explain sort of details of the construction as much as I will have time. Theory, first A. So we, st we start with a, with a graph, on, with a surface with corners. Part A. So let K inside X be any graph. Spanning or not. Then we have an infinity function from the category of Schober's. And again, uh, just with Foucault categories, I assume Schober's of two periodic categories for, on X with possible singularity in N, a factor I called RK, RK, to the category of ordinary sheaves of DG categories on the K, which categorifies, categorifies this construction. So which means that if we apply here the factor of taking Grotted group, 
And since you're dealing with perverse sheets, it's better to dealing with perverse sheets of vector spaces. So I uh, tender with a field. So then, but, uh, by construction, I should have mentioned this, but it's completely clear that there is a, by taking Grotty group everywhere, then from a perverse shower, we get a perverse sheet. So, and, and, and here, we again have this functor, k0, k, and we have ordinary shapes of vector spaces. And this functor would be the functor of cohomology with support, of first and the only one cohomology with support. Part one and part b, if uh, k is spanning, Or x and and containing n. So now this object is a sheaf of categories on the graph. So for this sheaf of categories, we can form the category of global sections. It's a certain homotopy inverse limit. So if this and this, then I write R, R gamma of k of this R k of s. So, and this is certain homotopy limit. So, is can ca canonically coherently independent on the choice of k? Is canonically, canonically <coughs> on the choice of such k? So, and therefore, it can be uh, called the topological Foucault category with coefficients in, in, in the shopper. It can be called, so, so, so call this, this uh, Foucault category of x with coefficients in the shopper. So, in the remaining time, let me say a little bit on how this Functor is, is, is constructed. Let me explain. Uh, let me explain uh, what's happening here. It, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a DG category. It's a holim in the category of DG category. We have just a diagram of categories, and we take this one. So let me just uh, finish. Sorry. De describe some stocks, stocks of R, K of C. So it, dep so it depends on, how, on uh, uh, when our point, so what kind of valency it has on the graph. So first of all, I should probably say that for for sigma being constant Schober or constant sheaf, constant uh, sheaf Schober, we recover Konsevich's proposal in terms of the A and quiver. Uh, the Schober with stock, let's say stock in category D, uh, you have R, R, K, R, K of S at a point W. W is the category of representations of A and quiver or in D, uh, where M is the valency of W, val valency of W at, as a point on the K, minus 1. And this is Konsevich's 
contentious proposal for, from, from some time ago for Fukaya contributors. So what we do is we, we, we sort of include this into a, a perverse shift type construction. So let me just have a comment here. Uh, so about this, about this diagram. So when we say that we have representations of a and quiver, when n is the valency of a vertex minus one, let me compare this with the sheaf with h1. Suppose we have a graph on a surface, k inside x. Consider the sheaf h1 with support of k, say of the constant sheaf of c x. It's a constructible sheaf on constructible sheaf on the graph. So in the rank of the stock at the vertex, so rank of stock at W in K equals valency of W minus one. So it will be zero if it is, if it, it's like this, it will be one if, it like, if it's like this, it will be two if it's like this, and so on. So what, what we notice here, in, in a way, is that, th is that this proposal, uh, in fact, secretly tells us something about homology with support. So the correct way of understanding this proposal is to look at homology with support for perverse sheaves. And in fact, the very, the very fact that perverse sheaves has, have purity for homology with support in, in such situation, suggests that they, it's the perverse sheaves and not some other type of constructible sheaves that are natural in this type of questions. So here I'll, I say what would happen if you have the constant, uh, if you have the constant sheaf or shopper, which sort of amounts to the constructing of Fukaya category of the surface on as it is. So now for more general shopper for a more. So first of all, suppose the graph, so let, let's just Suppose at a point W, the graph terminates in, it's in, a, in a one valent vertex. So if W is one valent, then this is the phi the, uh, the, uh, uh, of the phi psi description. This uh, original definition in my first talk, it is the original Galiga, Grange, Maisonobe, Malgrange description of the phi in terms of uh, as they say, micro functions, which means homology with support on a half, or on an interval which terminates at this point. Then, then RK of S W is simply phi W. So in particular, it will be zero if W doesn't lie in our point M. So we can always, any point, we can co-opt to the set N if you want. Just saying that the phi will be zero at this point. Now, already in this case, it's kind of interesting. Suppose W is this, and suppose K passes here. Then it should be, for, with analogy with perverse sheaves, it should be kind of analog of the direct sum, phi plus psi. This corresponds to Kashivara's formula for uh, hyperfunction solutions. Kashivara. For hyperfunction solutions. However, already in the case of perverse sheaves, it's not exactly phi plus psi. It is. It can be identified, but not in a very canonical way. So and let me explain uh, what's going on here. So that will be probably the last thing I can do today. But already this is cool. Uh, 
and relates to a, uh, a substantial amount of theory of triangulated categories. So and this would be uh, part six, I think. It's called semi-orthogonal decompositions of triangulated categories. So for categories, it will not be a direct sum of categories. It will be something else. And even here, it is not a canonically direct sum. So let me just recall the concept. Suppose B inside E is a full triangulated subcategory. Triangulated subcategory. In a triangulated category. Then uh, we can speak about orthogonals. We can speak about B right orthogonal, with the space of objects, the category formed E, by objects if which have no home. Say home from the any object in B to this E is zero. And <coughs> we can simply have the left orthogonal go in the other direction. So B is called right admissible. If every object <coughs> E in E includes into exact triangle for which one term lies in B and other lies in orthogonal. So includes into a triangle. B, E, C, and D of 1. So this lies in B. And this lies in the orthogonal. So, and in this case, it's known the triangle is then functorial. It's, it's a, both B and C can be defined as functors of E. Triangle is then factorial. So in this case, we say that uh, we have a semi-orthogonal decomposition. So in this, so we say, so in this, if this happens, we say that E, which is B, and here I write C, which is B orthogonal, is a semi-orthogonal decomposition. And in such case, uh, they are talking in one direction, but not in the other direction. So we have the gluing data. It's like, it's like an, a short exact sequence. So we have gluing data for a semi-orthogonal decomposition. Basically, it's the home functor in the other direction. From here to here, there are no homes. And it would be a direct sum of categories if there were no homes from C to B. But there may be homes from C to B. It would be functor phi from C op cross B, C op cross B, to the category of vector spaces. Simply home. Uh, and now, uh, if the functor phi home into B is representable, is representable on C. On C for every B. We get a functor, uh, we get a functor, let's call it a small phi from B to C. Which means that home in the category E from C to B is equal home in the category C from C to phi of B. And uh, in this case, uh, one can glue so, so conversely, there is a procedure uh, known as the 
gluing procedure is due to uh, has been written by Kuznets of Lunds and by Tabuada. So gluing. So given, so conversely given, so this basically describes things uniquely. Given, given B, C, and phi in, in a preterite in enhanced version. That more or less there is unique or canonical E, which is equal to semi orthogonal of the composition, with this gluing factor. So basically, it can be understood uh, from here, from this data. So you see, this is an exact triangle. It's not a direct sum. So there is a boundary map here. Uh, so naively, describing E up to isomorphism, simply it, it's the cool. So if you know the map, then we know E up to isomorphism. But home from, so this is a home from C to B, or, or the shifted one. So it is something which is covered by the gluing factor. So we can simply say, uh, so, so we can say, so naively, so it's a little bit uh, sort of uh, massaged, but naively, naively, an object of E is the same as an object B, B, C, and C, and the morphism delta in, so we want to write from C, C to B, but uh, using this formula will be in, uh, would be from C to C of B, one. So, and uh, let me uh, denote this category then to be uh, called S1 of C. So one is, uh, corresponds to this counting of valences. There is a similar construction for every uh, valency. But so, so far, I, I'm describing what happens in the easiest case. So then, to finish my uh, example here, so our recipe consists. So. So if we have something like this, then we have two spherical factors. In this data, remember, the spherical factors, they form a local system. So here we have a category, say, uh, B plus, and here we have the category C, uh, C plus, and the spherical factor would be F plus. And here we have a category B minus, where the factor is C minus, and the spherical factor would be F minus. So, the, so, so that the spherical factor corresponding spherical factors near W. So we define R. So we define R of S. W will be identified with S1 of F plus. And there is important uh, sort of uh, property here, uh, in, in, in this case, is a fact was recently, uh, relatively recently proved by Halpern Leinster. And uh, w w one more name, I, I think I, I just want to say it properly. Anyways, and, uh, and Shipman. That's the, simp the, the simplest instance of what we have for higher indices. But if phi is spherical, so we can do this for any functor phi. But if it's spherical, then, then in the category E, in E, which is B, C, we have a periodicity of orthogonals. We have B. We have 
C, which is B orthogonal, we have, C. we can continue the orthogonals. So we take C orthogonal, which is B second orthogonal, and we take C double orthogonal, which is B triple orthogonal. And then uh, B fourth, or, uh, fourth orthogonal is equal to B. And this is basically a characterization of functors being spherical. Now, the meaning of this is that, in, in general, theory of semi-orthogonal decomposition, every category is identified with its double orthogonal. So we are able to find realization of this as F1 of a plus in, in terms of this part of the categories. But if we do the other part of the categories, we will canonically uh, exhibit for us the same for the, for the opposite part. So what's the same is canonically, which is kind of remarkable, canonically, with S1 of F minus. So if you have some functor which is not spherical, we would never be able to do this. But it's precisely the property of a spherical functor which uh, gives this uh, for periodicity B. So, and then for higher valences, they have similar, uh, uh, even more remarkable periodicity properties for, the, for those glued categories. And uh, it's time for me to stop. Thank you very much.